we start the tour of Luxor Temple, the southern sanctuary of, of Amun, the other form of Amun-Ra of Karnak. So we start at point B on the map, the Avenue of Sphinxes, probably originally fashioned as ram sphinxes, but everything deteriorates. So that was in the 18th and 19th dynasty that this sphinx alleyway was created. Dynasty 30, Nectanebo the first comes along. He wants to make an impression. There is a problem with this sphinx alleyway, so he has them refurbished. <laughs> but not, not as Rams, in his own image. He is stamping his authority on Egypt. He wants a record of who he is and the people to know who he is. Located at sea is a small shrine de dedicated to the goddess Isis and it was used during the Roman period. Located at D is the massive pylons of Ramses II. So D is the pylons of Ramesses. Now, originally there were two obelisks there. The French borrowed one of them, which is now in Paris. In front of the um, pylons, there used to be standing statues of Ramesses. And you can see two fine colossal st statues, which are really like serdabs to place your offerings. They're seated statues, which indicates that they're of serdab nature. So if you couldn't afford to proceed into the open court, you could leave your offerings by these statues. The pylons again are celebrating the Battle of Kadesh that Ramesses II claimed victory to. Located at E, just inside the pylons, are the three bark shrines for Amun-Ra, Mut and Khonsu. So once the procession made its way down the Sphinx alleyway, there was the resting point for the barks of Amun-Ra. And also, if there was um, a circuit done for the elites in the open court to make pro proclamations and, and grant wishes and things like that during the Feast of Opet, this is where the priests would have taken their rest. Now Luxor Temple is an exciting place to be, but don't rush off because around this open court inscribed on the walls are the magical pictures of the procession of Opet traveling from the north to this southern uh, sanctuary here. So you've got a picture of the pylons with the statues outside and the flags coming down the flagpoles and things like that. It's wonderful. So as I mentioned earlier, Outside of the open courtyard at A is the uh, Christian Basilica, which I think was probably abandoned soon after it was constructed, which is why you've got only got outlying buildings. They couldn't cope with the floodwaters. Now, on the columns, you'll see a racket bird, and the racket bird has a broken wing. And it represents the people of Egypt as being vulnerable and the king as the protector. It also tells the public, um, so we're talking about the elite public here, not the everyday public, um, how far you can proceed into the temple. So it's a way of um, controlling people. So if you saw a racket bird, you knew you was allowed in, in that area. If there's no racket bird, it's off limits to you. Now moving on to G is the processional um, colonnade started by Amenhotep III. Um, the project was abandoned during the years of Arkhanaten, the heretic, so-called heretic. He took the capital off to Amarna. It was restarted by Tutankhamun and probably finished by Horemheb. Now the open court behind um, this colonnade procession was built by Amenhotep III and you'll note that those papyrus columns are closed whereas in this colonnade procession it shows the reaction of the flood, life, growth, the papyrus columns are open, they're flowering. So let's move on to H then. So this is the so-called sun court of Amenhotep III, so the original open court where the bark of this Ammon of the Southern Sanctuary would go around making gifts and proclamations and that sort of thing. 
Now what's important about this open court, when the Romans took over the site to use as um, barracks and an area of administration and, and a place of worship for themselves, they dug a big hole and they put 26 statues in the hole and then paved over the top. And that's where they stayed until 1989 when they were rediscovered. The statues are now in the Luxor Museum and they are wor well worth a visit because they've avoided thousands of years of being uh, neglected and thrown, pushed over and defaced. And you think when the Romans buried them, you hadn't had the Christian period and a lot of damage was done during the Christian period. But those statues are beautiful. Now, being the Romans, you know, yeah, they're big brutes, aren't they, really? They go around, they push everyone around. You've got to be Roman. No, we don't want to. You be Christians. So why are they using this place? They converted part of it into a sanctuary. So I is the Roman sanctuary. So they converted it by plastering over the reliefs and putting these paintings on. What sacrilege how could you do that to this beautiful bas relief art so if you noticed in Ramesses uh, Ramesses the Ramesses the second's uh, open court all of his uh, reliefs were cut into the stone but all the reliefs in Amenhotep the third's uh, part of Luxor temple is all bas relief so it's raised from uh, um, the flat surface and they did that by chipping round all these pictures and writing to make it into a raised surface so that would have taken a long long time the craftsmanship was amazing that it's only surpassed by the 12th dynasty chapel of Semmesret the first at Karnak it really is quality work and all of these reliefs these magical pictures would have been painted as well so not just chipping it out and smoothing everything over to get it perfect then you had to paint it wow at K was a bark shrine built during the uh, kingship of Alexander the Great now he probably wasn't in Egypt when it was built now my favorite part of the temple was at L this is the birthing room. Now at Dedha Bakri, uh, Hatshepsut in her mortuary, uh, her mortuary temple had this birthing scene where she was being born by the gods. You know, that's how they associated themselves by saying, hey, look at this picture. It's a magical picture. I was born from the gods. So Amenhotep III has done exactly the same. In Dela Bakri, Hatshepsut is appears as a baby in the in the arms and the hands of the gods. In Luxor Temple, Amenhotep the Third is born as a little king, with the, all of his regalia on, his crowns and 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 that sort of thing. So he appears on the hand as a small king. I just think that is so funny. So he's this little mini king who's going to grow into a big king one day. I just think that is so funny. Moving on to M is the Opet apartments, the private apartments. Only the king and his wives would be allowed in this part of the temple during the Feast of Opet and they are going to recreate Min or Amun as in of this Aetolithic form of Min to uh, reseed the land. So I'll leave it up to your imagination as to what the queens are doing and what the role of the king is. N is the Holy of Holies, the personal relationship between the king and the god Amun of the southern apartments or the southern sanctuary. And in this room are the magical pictures to make offerings to a moon in the absence of the king. So what you're looking at is magic. So it's a bit like a neo-bearing statue, but it's not a statue, it's a picture. They're all pictures. These are magical pictures. So in the absence of Amenhotep III, the offerings would be given to a moon. So what you're looking at is magic. Look at the close embrace between the king and our moon, you know, so you're looking at God, king, father, son.
The Luxor Temple is best visited in the summer at nine o'clock. The sun's up, it's nice and bright and it's hot. In the winter time, go there at two. So these are the best times for the sun reflection to illuminate the scenic release for you to see. If you go at other times, you'll find that the temple's in shadow and you won't see much. You need to take a torch with you. I hope you enjoyed the content of this video. I would dearly love to go to Egypt and make this video on site. I can tell you so much more by seeing the primary data. Um, I'm using pictures here to give you an example, but if I was to go to the temple, I could do a much, much better tour. Now, if you'd like to support the project, on the next page is the information link to make a small donation. A pound would be really good. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye for now and see you soon.